Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Bhagam Radian here at the Australian Embassy in Washington, D.C., which is hosting some incredibly innovative small Australian companies that are trying to get uh, investment capital sales in the United States, especially with the DOD market. And one of them is my friend uh, Dan Milford, uh, who is the chief executive of Chironics. Uh, Dan, uh, great to see you again. Uh, absolutely fascinating uh, couple of days here. Uh, thanks very much for hooking us up with so many uh, fascinating uh, Australian companies. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you guys do because uh, your guys are on a growth track. Uh, what you do is a little bit on the unique side that other folks don't do. Uh, your uh, secret sauce in uh, Google Glass. Talk to us about your technology and how it's potentially game changing. Thanks, Margaret. So we focus on human robot collaboration and what we want to do is enable our robots and the autonomous systems themselves to have really high level perception. And that's what we focus on, making robots able to perceive the environment as competent as us humans, both through sight and their ability to sense and experience the environment. That means not only the ability to see through standard electromagnetic spectrum based systems, but also using LIDAR, point cloud technologies, millimeter wave radar, to then forward new and novel terrain. Now that's one of our contracts with the Office of Naval Research who are here tonight, to actually enable us to extract casualties from warfare and successfully deliver them the back to a, a host services battalion to have treatment performed on them and save lives. So in that context, we're managing nutrition. But at the same time as improving our robots, we want to enable our humans to actually then interface with robots natively. Now, not everyone's a robotics engineer or a rocket scientist, and we know the native way that we engage as humans is through talk, gesture, control. So we utilize systems like Glass for Enterprise as an interface for us to work with robots, to talk. So I want to be able to talk to a basic robot that's delivering a payload or doing a mobile manipulation task with me and tell it to do something and it understands it. The same thing for you. You just talk into the robot as you would with a 10-year-old child and say, Johnny, I need you to go 100 metres down the road and deliver this to Mrs Parker. Right. And it does it predictively, safely and routinely with every operation so the robot systems become part of our autonomous force even supporting squads in the field. Um, so talk to us a little bit about how you guys do that. You're using some proprietary equipment, uh, some stuff that already exists. How do you do that? Because the challenge of, you know, if you, if you consider, if, if I tell you, hey, Dan, go get the backpack in this crowded yeah. space, you're going to go there, and you're not even going to think about it, you're going to go and get a backpack. Whereas for a robot, it is a very, very complicated space to try to navigate from. So talk to us about the whole ecosystem of technologies you guys are harnessing to be able to make it as simple as just talking to the Google Glass and having it go do it. Exactly, okay. So we're approaching it from both sides, the human augmentation and the robotics automation side. On the robotics automation, it's about improving the perception, the awareness and the ability for the robot to operate without an internet connection, to operate truly on the edge in an IoT context. And this is where our secret source is at the moment. We're really focusing on robot operating system, building proprietary information around that solution so we can deliver it to our clients. And Nirvana is having robots forward new and novel terrain which hadn't been previously mapped, which means in the ground space, it gives you immediate freedom of movement. That locomotion over new and novel terrain, it can see where a log is and decide to move around it so it doesn't affect the payload, be it a casualty, cargo, whatever. So that's really important to get that perception up and we're routinely working on that with our customers and clients in the United States as well as in Australia as well. At the same time, with glass and other devices like this, we've started off with a basic maintenance issue. We want to give maintainers glass in the field so they can go through work orders and work instructions and talk to it through natural language processing. So just by wearing glass, you can see a display that comes up and you can actually see it on the other side here. And it says what the time is and all the functions. But I can talk to the device and say, okay, glass, bring up my maintenance procedures. I can go through now a helicopter maintenance procedure, for instance, disassemble components and parts because I'm interfacing with this heads up display. And this is really an extension of your Six Sigma and lean processes. That's where we're at at the moment. In the laboratory, what we're doing is actually enabling a lot of the natural language processing now to come out as commands, as we do in the military anyway. We command soldiers to say, okay, range 100 meters, axis of advance, two enemy in a machine gun uh, pit, fire for effect, fire. We have that down pat. That's the standard routine right. way we go through with military language. You can use that same language for a dictation client, and when we link that to autonomy, that allows us to move quicker, really quick through our battle processes. Right. Now that's at the tactical level. If you exchange uh, the tactical level for the strategic or operational level, you consider the OODA loop, observe, orientate, decide and act. Our mission, if you take away all the technology, our mission is to make that OODA loop as fast as possible. 
We want to go from observe and orientate as fast as we can through to action. Because if we're faster in that OO loop process, we're then going to outcompete any peer adversary. Um, and talk to us a little bit. You're a 15 uh, person company. Yeah. Uh, you're looking to dramatically expand here in the United States as well. Where do you see yourself uh, in, say, five years? You know, where do you want to be? Wow, that's an excellent question. So, yes, as, as you said, we're 15 people based in Perth and uh, Canberra in Australia currently. And we're doing some excellent work across the Asia Pacific region. Uh, we're here with the landing pad in um, Washington, D.C. for the next uh, two to three months. And we have an office established currently in San Francisco. Um, depending how our relationship goes with the primes, because we are looking to partner. We know that the United States is a, a new market to us and that you need a certain level of com competence and uh, links to the uh, community here, including up to Congress. So we're looking to really team and partner to enable the large primes to utilize our technologies to maximize our joint partnership benefit. Um, in five years' time, what that results in is I expect that we will have an LLC or an incorporated entity here in the United States. We know that a lot of the machine learning developers, robotic automation, be it in the Ivy League schools, MIT, etc., there's a lot of focus on this. And we are also focusing in Australia. And I think we can bring some new and novel things to this environment because I'm from Perth, the most isolated, or second most isolated city in the world after Honolulu, Hawaii. Huh. So it's a five hour flight uh, to the next city in Australia but on a jet line, a jet, on a jet airliner. So that's characterised our development. We've really focused on enabling people over distance to overcome this tyranny of distance so we don't have to fly people out after two days to fix a simple thing which you can achieve by giving someone something as simple as glass and a video conferencing experience which is what we're doing currently with our commercial clients and in the future we're going to have autonomous robots doing those activities in the fourth industrial revolution. So we're really born and bred from this experience of trying to get the best technology into the hands of people and I think that will result in five years' time as us having a capability here in the United States to leverage for the defense industry. And what's the best way for uh, people to get in touch with you? Uh, definitely email or via our website, chironics.com. And just some background there, we called it Chironics because of Chiron, the Greek centaur, man, you know, we're fusing the human torso and the horse body. Our whole concept is human robot. So email or my personal email you can see it on the website phone calls into us uh, we are established in the united states but www.chironics c-h-i-r-o-n-i-x.com is our landing dan milford uh, ceo of chironics always a pleasure thanks very much best of luck cheers. and looking forward to at least uh, having a pint with you before oh, we get out of here fantastic. thanks man. cheers thanks so much cheers